From the family Aranidae, which is the family of orb weavers, this is the spined Microthena, or also known as the castleback orb weaver. They're easily confused with the spiny-backed orb weavers. So we have spined orb weavers and spiny-backed orb weavers, but they are not the same. That's why I wanted to do this video for you all. We correct all the little misconceptions on this nature channel and give you the true data. And although these guys look very similar, spiny-backed orb weavers, Gastroacantha, are of a completely different genus. The Microthena notably have extremely long spines, and it's said that these spines have evolved at least eight times in this genus. Many variations. And these spines are likely for anti-predatory defenses. The Gastrocantha orb weavers also have hardened abdomens with variously shaped spines, but again, they are not related. All these spiders are active during the daytime and will build vertical orb webs, but unlike many other orb weavers, members of this Microthena bite their prey before wrapping it. And when laying eggs, the females will place the egg sac on vegetation near the web. The genus Gastrocantha contains about 70 species. The genus Microthena contains about 120 species, but only four are found in the United States and Canada. The most prevalent and widespread is the Microthena gracilis. The females have five pairs of spines. Spines also can be called conical tubercles. The males are smaller and don't have any spines. They have more of a flat, elongated brown abdomen and they're very seldom seen. Then there's the white Microthena, these females have two short posterior pairs of spines. And then we have the female arrow-shaped Microthena. They have three pairs. The hundred other species are found in neotropical regions. The tropical regions of the Americas and the entire South American temperate zone. The Gastrocantha species is also distributed worldwide in tropical and subtropical climates, especially in Asia and India through Indonesia. And it's this one species here, the Gastrocantha cancriformis, that can be found in the Americas. That's why when you do see one, it's worth taking the time to witness it in action and take a minute to admire the web. They're all a little different. These little orb weavers make pretty cool intricate webs and can stretch across the width of entire trails. And they do it in a triangle. Most often, there's a long horizontal line at the top that connects two trees on opposite sides of the trail. Then from one end of this top line, another strand of silk is angled down to the ground or base of one of those trees, and then the third line connects the other two. It's a dry, non-sticky escape line the spider can also use in crisis to evacuate back up to the tree or a branch and then try to hide. Orb weavers just love wooded areas, forests, and can be found in trees, shrubs, gardens, around people's houses. Another good reason to take the time to admire them for a minute and maybe inspire to learn more about them is that the fact that they don't live very long. Unfortunately, their lifespan is only until reproduction. The males die six days after impregnating the female, which is common with spiders anyways, and the female dies after producing an egg mass. Same for the Microthena gracilis. They hatch in the spring, after the summer's growth, the female lays the eggs in a sack that remains dormant through the winter months. Their general lifespan is a year or less. But it's in the very center of this triangle that the orb weavers will make a tightly woven spiral of sticky silk with sometimes very intriguing white patterns and markings. And sometimes the markings are just to fix the web. Moths and flies and everything else on their menu is likely going to try and fly down this open area, so it makes sense they're going to try to utilize this space. I love looking for ones with any kind of color to them, other than just being black and white. 
And remember, it's the females that have these spines and are bright colors. The males don't. These spines are hard and they're hardened. They do offer the female much protection. But because of their complex taxonomic history and the males not being easy to find, questions about their distribution and generic interrelationships remain unanswered. There's so much left to explore here with orb weavers. Just thought you should know. And just to think, the length and shapes of their spines are evolving right before our very eyes. Who's going to take the time to study and document it? I love seeing the yellows and reds and oranges and... Oh, remember, red is nature's way of saying, caution, stay away from me. A good color for the females to have. Well, thank you again for watching. And now that it's late summer, I'm starting to notice all the spotted and marbled orb weavers that are starting to show up. That might be what my next video will be upon. The spotted and marbled orb weavers. See you on the next one.